Now, in terms of working anywhere, anytime, I think I've, you may or may not know, I may have mentioned it or not mentioned it, but I spent a lot of years in the corporate world. And in those years, I felt sometimes like I was just dying a little bit every day. One of the ways I was able to retain some of my sanity, and I, was work, I worked in the finance industry, I had a lot of responsibility and a lot of pressure, and I handled a portfolio of sort of valuable clients for the institution I worked for, and I spent a lot of time on the telephone. And everyone that knew me during my whole finance banking career knew that I doodled. I doodled on everything. I doodled in meetings. I doodled on every scrap of paper on my desk had doodling on it. I'd sit in meetings and sketch the back of the head of the person in front of me if we were in a like a you know classroom or seminar setting. If we were around a conference table, I would just sort of quietly <laughs> doodle. And I used to think, man, people think I'm not paying attention. Well. What I was doing was I was dealing with my ADD. And the only way I could continue to listen and stay focused on what was going on in the meeting or the seminar was by doodling because it engaged the part of me that just had to be busy so that my, I could use my left brain to listen to the conversation and my right brain was just busy doodling. Along the way somewhere, I saw a study that, that was like validation because I had no idea and there was a study done that showed that people who doodle during meetings or classes retain more information than those who don't. Who knew? <laughs> anyway, uh, and it was a real it was a real study that, that showed that. So along the way, at some point, I discovered Post-it notes or sticky notes. They're not they're not exclusively Post-it. And I started doodling on those at my office when I was on the phone, usually. I could just sit with some, I'd have a pile of like Sharpie pens next to me when I'm on the phone and I probably have a pad of paper here taking notes and then I also have a couple of post-its over here with my Sharpies and I would just sit and without thinking I'd just be making lines and sketching, just just making shapes, just patterns, a lot of them are just, were just patterns. And I did these post-it notes for several years and I had thousands of them and after I left that career and became a full-time artist. I was encouraged to send some of these to, uh, to 3M company, Post -It, who makes Post-it notes. So I looked and they had a Facebook page for Post-it and people could upload their, their work. And so I uploaded a, some of my Post-it notes to their page. And a few weeks later, I was contacted by a representative there from their media company for 3M and asked if they could exhibit my post-it notes. <laughs> Lo and behold, they'd seen them and I ended up shipping these three albums to New York City for a big media event they had for the post-it brand. And these were exhibited there. And then eventually they came back home. But uh, these were just the doodlings of a, of a madman that I, you know, in a lot of ways these saved my life. That sounds probably a little bit overly dramatic, but I believe it's somewhat true. These saved my life. They certainly saved my sanity when I was in that world and could not be, could not be the artist I wanted to be. And they're just, they're all different. No two are alike. And I just had a lot of a lot of a lot of fun, you know, just doing these. And the strange thing is about these is when I left the finance world, I thought, well, this is this is I always felt like this was probably the most original art I ever made. It was purely mine. It was not influenced or by anything or anyone else. And so I thought, you know, I need to keep this series going. I need to continue to do these. So I tried for a, t a time afterward to do some of these like at home in the evening when I was sitting uh, watching TV or whatever, I'd have a little clipboard on my lap and I'd try to do some of these post-it notes. It just didn't work. It just, everything, they served a purpose under a certain set of circumstances and when those circumstances were gone, the, this just, just didn't work anymore as an art form for me. Some of these are colored pencil. Uh, these are all colored pencil. 
But, I, you know, there again, I was doing value studies, right? I was exploring value in these, light and dark. And I don't know if you want to see all of these, but they are, uh, I always said, these are the most original art I ever made. And even some of it was representational, like a, li a lily pad there. Or a lily, lily flower. And, um, you know, some are just very simple. But, but see, that's a composition. That's composing right there. You got contrasts, you got directional contrast. Some of the shapes are different sizes, you know. But this is what I did. Some of them are cooler than others. Some are, you know, it's just, that's not so hot. That's not so hot. That's pretty cool. So, but uh, I just loved doing them. And, and I wish I still could, but it, I don't know why. It's just, it's just not there to do these. But uh, they were fun. There's a little bird. <laughs> I can see the ones looking through here where I maybe did actually stop and kind of think about what I was doing a little bit. And then the ones where I was just, where it was just automatism, just muscle, muscle memory making the shapes. So there's some of both here. Some of these I'd try to kind of do wet into wet. I'd have one color on that was wet and I would start blending with another color, just using, just using a Sharpie marker, a highlighter marker and uh, different colors and try to blend and make a kind of a landscapey looking thing there. So, very simple, simple designs, some of them, some very complex. This was probably not made on one of my better days. <laughs> uh, this one either, because I must have been thinking about drinking, so that must not have been a great day either. <laughs> uh, but, that's my post. That's my post-it notes. I'm going through these fast because this isn't why we're here to look at these. But the only point of showing you these is to say that you can be creative anywhere, anywhere. Um, the thing I love about like the iPad using Procreate is that I can be in a waiting room. I've made, I've made no secret about having had cancer over a two year period being treated for cancer and, and spending a lot of time in doctor's offices. I could sit there with my iPad and discreetly sketch and nobody knew what I was doing. And I could be sketching the person across the room and they're not gonna come over and slug me because they don't know what I'm doing. And like I said, you, you pull out your paint box and your, your paper and <laughs> You start doing it, start working, everyone's gonna come and look over your shoulder. So you can be much more discreet with the, uh, with the iPad. But my point is just find a way to be able to be doing some, find an outlet for your creativity, work that muscle in your brain, that creative muscle as often as you can, preferably something every day. I sit in front of the TV and, and use Procreate when I'm watching American Idol or The Voice or Britain's Got Talent or whichever shows. I, I love all those talent shows. Uh, I just sit there with my iPad and I sketch if I'm not working on my computer because I have to multitask. That's my ADD thing. I'm either doing emails or writing and watching TV or I'm drawing on my iPad while I'm watching TV. But you need that outlet. You need to be able to do it. 